Hi, welcome to my latest video. Again, we're this time looking at a vintage telephoto lens. In this case, it's bearing the name of Dolond. It's a Dolond S and it is a 135mm 3.5 telephoto lens. Hopefully you can see that. Um, 3.5 maximum aperture, so it's not you know, going to set any world records when it comes to maximum aperture. But my goodness me, what a cute little 135 lens. Compact, very usable. Um, preset lenses, uh, if you've seen the earlier video that I've done on the 35mm preset Prinz Galaxy wide-angle lens, <clears throat> I ended up by basically not using it because A, it was optically very poor and B, mechanically, the focus ring and preset aperture ring were far too close together. In fact, just let me get it here. And if I put the two lenses side by side, I'm hoping you can see the difference. With the 35mm Prins here, this is the focusing ring and the preset, lens, preset ring is right in front of it and the two, there's hardly any separation between the two which means that changing one makes it very easy to either alter focus or alter the actual aperture setting. Now compare that to the uh, Dolond S there's at least 10-15mm of separation between the focusing ring here and the preset aperture ring here. For those of you that aren't used to using preset lenses, there is absolutely no mechanical connection between the lens and the camera. There's no pin, there's no tab, nothing whatsoever links the lens iris to the camera. So you have to alter it manually and if we just look down into the lens, get some light shining through it, and if I set the front ring down to f22, which is its minimum stop, and then turn the preset ring, you can see that it opens and closes without any click stops. Video people will love these because it means they can fade the image um, very smoothly by just by altering this preset aperture ring at the back here. The beauty of a preset lens is that once you've taken your exposure meter reading, let's assume for example it's going to tell you to use 125th at f8, you obviously set your shutter speed on the camera body, turn the front ring so it registers with f8, sorry get it in shot, you would then focus on your subject with the lens wide open, in this case at 3.5, and then there's no need to take your eye away from the viewfinder. All you do then is rotate the second ring, the preset ring, as far as it will go. And it will only go down this time as far as F8. So it's a fairly convenient way of setting the aperture. Focusing on this little lens, nice and smooth. Optically it's good and clear. Very, very slight dent in the filter ring here. Uh, it won't at the moment accept any filters. That's something I'm prepared to put up with because the results from this lens have been really, really good. Uh, it's a T2 lens mount, same as the Prinz Galaxy wide angle I showed you. And as I said before, and I will mention it again, T2 and M42 are not interchangeable. The pitch of the two threads is slightly different. The diameter is more or less exactly the same but it's the thread pitch which is different and if you try and if I tried to screw this lens straight onto a Pentax or Practica thread camera body I'd be doing some damage to the threads. So you must get an M42 T2 mount if you want to mount it onto your Pentax or Practica camera. From what I can gather, Dolland 
um, we're a well-established and long-established um, optical company in the UK here, dating back to the 18th century, uh, Dolland and Aitchison. Now, it's very unlikely that they ever produced any lenses. They certainly wouldn't have produced um, a lens like this because it's clearly stamped that it's made. Where are we? There we are. Lens made in Japan. So chances are it's an early Tokina preset lens. Whether I've been lucky or not with this particular example, I don't know, but it is a lovely sharp lens. It's practical. It's still compact and it gives uh, an effective focal length on my APS-C camera of, I guess, round about 180, something like that. So it's a useful telephoto lens and I'm delighted with it. Cost about £15 from the internet. Uh, it's always worth um, trawling through the internet auction sites as well as going to visit your local flea markets and car boot sales, yard sales if you're in the States. Uh, because there are plenty of these out there, 1960s vintage lens, excellent buy. I think I've been lucky. See you again next time.